Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve designing a linked list. As you may know, a linked list is a pretty simple data structure where we have some nodes and typically every single node will have some type of value like one or two. In this case, the values are integers and also nodes will have pointers at the very least every node will have a next pointer which could be connected to a, another node and then that node could also have a next pointer that may not be connected to a node and then this would be considered the end of the linked list and we could also have a previous pointer going from every single node backwards and in the context of this problem actually we have the choice of whether we want to use a singly linked list or a doubly linked list and in this problem I'll be implementing the doubly linked list because it's a bit more complicated and I think that's probably what qualifies this problem as being a medium problem. So I'll quickly go over what exactly we're going to be implementing and then we're gonna start. So first we need a constructor for our linked list class. That's pretty straightforward. We also want a get function, which will get the node at some particular index. And in this problem, things are zero index. So the first node would be the zeroth position, the next node would be the first position and then two and then three, et cetera, et cetera, just like an array. Now we do have to deal with some edge cases in the case that this index doesn't even exist in this problem. If we were trying to look for index two, well, there is no a node at index two. In that case, we would return a, a default value of negative one. We also want to be able to insert nodes in this case at the head of the linked list. So we're just given a value, not a node. We could be given the value three, for example, and we want to insert a new node with the value three at the beginning of our linked list. So if this is our linked list, we want to insert a new node here, give it a value three, connect it with you know the next node, and then this will be the new head of our linked list. Next, similarly, we have add at tail. That's pretty much the same thing, except we would be inserting the node over here and then connecting it. It would be the end of the linked list. We don't have to worry about edge cases with this one either, but the next two are probably what make this problem a bit difficult. We have plenty of edge cases with these ones. One, let's start with add at index. We're given an index and a value. We want to insert a node. So if this was called with index zero and value three, we would just be inserting at the head, just like we did previously, because in index zero, when they say we're inserting at this index, we're inserting before the indexed node. So if we're given a value of zero for the index, we're inserting before the zeroth node. So we would be inserting at the head. Instead, if for the index we were given one, then we would be inserting before this node, because this is zero, this is one, then we would be inserting inserting in the middle over here. And we'll talk about how we're gonna do that, but mainly we're gonna be needing to update these pointers to something like this. Now, the other one we have is delete at index. Actually, before we move on to that, if the index is greater than the length, the node will not be inserted. So that is an edge case that we have to worry about. So if we were given index of zero, that's perfectly fine. If we're given index of one, that's fine. And if we're given index two, that's also fine because we're inserting before index two. So we would insert the node right here. But if we were given a value of three, then that is out of bounds. Lastly, we have delete at index. This one is a bit more straightforward, I think, than adding at index, because if we're given an index zero, this one, then we're gonna be deleting this node. If we're given an index one, we're deleting this node. If we're given index two, that is out of bounds. There's nothing to delete here. In that case, we don't have to do anything. Now let's move on to the solution. Okay, so now let's code it up and we'll also be going through the visualization of the solution as we do it, because it's pretty helpful when we're doing a lot of like pointer manipulation, things can get kind of tricky. First thing we want to do is of course create a node class where we have a next pointer and a previous pointer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to have a class. I'm just going to call it list node and it's going to have a pretty basic constructor where we're just given a value and we're going to initialize that value. And we can by default set the previous pointer equal to null and the next pointer also equal to null. Now let's move on to the constructor of the linked list class, what I'm going to do is initialize two nodes, actually a left node, which is just going to be given a value of zero to start with, and also a right node, which is going to be given a value of zero as well. And I'm also going to connect these nodes together. So left.next is going to point at the right node and right.previous is going to point at the left node. So what we've done so far is basically we've created two two nodes over here that are connected with each other. The reason I'm drawing them so far apart is because these are going to be our dummy node. So we have a left dummy node and a right dummy node. This is not required to solve this problem. And this is not 
not something most likely you'll come up with by yourself. It's just a very, very helpful technique to deal with linkedless problems. You'll see why I'm doing this later on, but basically it allows us to not have to deal with edge cases because think about it. When we have like an empty linked list like this one, inserting into the uh, linked list is basically just creating a node and then having something point at it and saying, this is the new head of our linked list. And when we have multiple nodes and we want to delete the head of our linked list, it's different because we don't actually have to move any pointers over here. We're just saying that now this is our new head. But when we have dummy nodes, then every single operation is dealing with a node that is in the middle of the linked list. So whether we're removing this node or inserting a node, everything is going on in the middle of the linked list. We don't have to deal with any edge cases at the beginning or at the end. And imagine our real doubly linked list looks something like this, where the blue nodes are the actual nodes that have real values that we inserted into the linked list. And these are just kind of our dummy nodes. Now. Our get function, thankfully, is pretty straightforward. Remember that this is our zeroth node and this is our first node. So when we're given an index, we just want to return that value. So we're going to start at this node here and then keep incrementing our pointer until we've reached the correct index. The way I like to do that is, so I'm going to set cur equal to self dot left dot next. And basically, while our current pointer is non-null, because we know we possibly could go out of bounds and our index is greater than zero. The reason I'm doing it this way is because I prefer to just decrement our index by one every single time. The alternative is to just declare a second variable, but I'd rather just do it this more simple way. And we're going to be incrementing our pointer every time. So current is going to be current dot next. Now you might think, can we just go ahead and return current dot val? Not necessarily because we have to make sure that we haven't gone out of bounds. So we have to say if cur is non null and we have to make sure that we haven't reached the end of the length list. Because remember the way we're doing it, we have a dummy node. What happens if our current pointer ends over here at this dummy node? We definitely don't want to return that value. That's considered being out of bounds. We're also going to say if current is not equal to self dot right. And lastly, our index has to be equal to zero because otherwise that means maybe this loop exited before we were able to reach the index that we wanted to reach. That would happen if our length list was too small to delete this index. That means this index did not exist. In that case, we can return this value. Otherwise, we're going to return negative one. Okay, so now moving on to adding at head. Thankfully, this is pretty straightforward. We hardly have to even focus on the drawing in this case. Mainly what we're going to do is given the value that we're given, let's say the value is X, we're going to create this node. We're going to take the left pointer and then move its pointer to point at this new node. And I forgot to draw the previous pointer of this one. So sorry about that. But assuming that it has a previous pointer pointing here, what we're going to do is move that pointer to also point at the new node. So its previous pointer is pointing here now. And of course, this new node that we're creating, I'll make it blue because it's a real node. We're going to be having its next pointer point at this guy and its previous pointer point at this guy. Pretty simple. And we'll be doing the exact same thing when we work on add at tail, which is basically going to be inserting a new node here where this pointer is going to go here and this is going to point back. This is going to point here and this is going to point backwards. So I'm going to create a new node and call it just node. And I'm also going to do this. I'm going to create a next value and a previous value. These are the next and previous nodes. We know the next node is going to be self dot left dot next. And we know that the previous node is just going to be self dot left. So this way, I think it makes it easier than having to use like these names because otherwise it can get kind of confusing. If we just focus on the current node that we're inserting the next node and the previous node, it's pretty simple. So we'll have previous dot next point at node. We'll have next dot previous point at the node and we'll have the nodes next pointer pointing at the next node and we'll have the nodes previous pointer pointing at the previous node. As you can tell, this is pretty simple. I even prefer to kind of condense them into a single line, like move these two into the same line and these two into the same line, but that doesn't really matter. And since this is very similar to adding at tail, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste it. The main difference though, is that our next node in this case is going to be self dot right. And our previous node is going to be self dot right dot previous. Otherwise, these pointer manipulations are pretty much exactly the same. You could even create a helper function if you wanted to, to simplify this. Now let's move on to the more difficult ones, add at index and delete at index. They're pretty similar. We'll start with add at index. So what we're going to do is start our current pointer here at the first node, and we're going to keep incrementing until we get to the correct index that we want to be at. Now, what happens 
if we reach this index, that's going to be fine because remember, we're not inserting at this index. We're inserting before for this index. So if our pointer ends here, we're going to insert the node over here. If our pointer ends over here, we're going to insert the node over here. If the, our pointer ends over here, we're going to insert the node here. But if our pointer goes out of bounds past the dummy node, then we can't insert a node. So what we're going to do, set our current pointer equal to self dot left dot next while current is non null and index is greater than zero. I'm going to decrement our index. That's very important. We don't want to get stuck and we're going to increment our current dot next well our current pointer to the current dot next and now how do we know if we're actually at a valid position well first of all if our current pointer is non-null and our index is equal to zero in that case what are we going to do well i'm going to first copy and paste what we did up above because it's very very similar so let's copy and paste it and first we're creating a new node with the value that we're given as a parameter what's going to be the next node in this case well current is going to be the next node. So we're going to set this to cur. What's going to be the previous node in this case? Well, it's going to be cur dot previous. And then after that, this is again, pretty much the exact same. You can see that once you get used to this, you can pretty much just turn your brain off and then, you know, just go on autopilot. Now moving on to delete at index, it's going to be very, very similar to this with the main difference being that in our drawing, we are actually deleting the node itself that our pointer lands at. So if this is the node that we're deleting, then we delete it. If this is the node that we're deleting, then we delete it. But what happens if our pointer ends at this position at the dummy node. Well, we're definitely not deleting the dummy node. It's not a valid node. So in that case, we would not want to perform the delete operation. Similarly, if we end up out of bounds, we still don't want to delete because obviously we can't delete in that case. So now coding it up, I'm just going to you know copy and paste this entire thing because it's again, pretty similar. We're going to keep incrementing our current pointer until we get to the position. Then we're going to check is our current pointer non-null. And not only that, but is our current pointer not equal to self dot right because in that case we also can't delete and our index should be equal to zero that means we were able to actually reach the position that we wanted to reach and at this point we can perform the delete in this case the next node is going to be current dot next and the previous node is going to be current dot previous just like we already have and then this is you know just making that insertion actually no we don't want to insert in this case we want to delete how do we do that though well first of all we probably don't want to actually create a new node you can see that maybe you don't want to turn your brain off too much. So given a previous pointer and a next pointer, the way to delete a node like this one is pretty simple. We don't even have to update this node's pointers. We just have to take the previous node's next pointer and change it. And we also have to update the next node's previous pointer and then change that as well. This next pointer will be pointing at the next node and this previous pointer will be pointing at this node. And then as far as we know, this node doesn't even exist. Technically, we do have a memory leak if we don't delete this node, but we usually don't have to worry about that in coding interviews or on leak code. So then moving back to the code, what I'm going to do is say next dot previous is going to be equal to previous and previous dot next is going to be equal to next. And that is pretty much the entire code. I'm going to go ahead and submit it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it is pretty efficient. So I really hope that this video was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to view the entire code, you can do so on neatcode.com. Io. We should also have solutions for the other most common languages. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.